G'day mate and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included with me, JD. Um, last episode, obviously, we, we, we set up this, this actively cooling system to just cool down just the pipes right here um, as a sort of a way to start cooling the base. At the same time, we've started the process of swapping over all our existing pipes that could be carrying hot water over to insulated pipes. Um, the dupes will get there over time. It will take them a little while to get there, but we're not, not in any big rush. Any of these pipes that's carrying potentially cool water from our, our water reserves can stay in, in normal pipe because in theory all it's going to do is is stay at sort of either the same temperature or, or suck up temperature from... Um, that's interesting. Copper oil coming from the printing prog comes out super cold. Anyway, um... Yeah, all, all it's going to do is maintain the current sort of base temperature. Um, there's there's no real need to, to swap those over to insulated pipes. And as you can see, insulated pipes take some time. Um, of course, nobody's going to do construction at the moment. Hurry up, game. Every flush of toilets. Every great food. Chomp, 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 chomp. Have some pleasant conversation. Get some nice morale bonus. Oh, and it's bedtime. Okay, that didn't work out well. Um, but what we can look at is actually our jobs. And um, this is something that, that... Because we've been optimizing as we go, um, we're still like really in that mid-game area. But our current morale for our learning character is at 21. Which actually means... Oh, uh, actually means he can come up to a tier 6 scientist and get the tenured science role which adds virtual planetarium research which is like space science we're not even anywhere near that yet um, but it is possible he could get up to there um, who else uh, we've got our strength plus 3 who has finished the plumber role. Uh, groundskeeper, gopher. So he can start as a gopher, being tidying up. Uh, and the only other one is our miner. Our miner doesn't quite have enough to go all the way up to a season miner. Uh, but you know what? We're probably going to do it anyway. Because we're fairly close. If if learning plus five has a morale of twenty one, it probably means that strength, um, our, our tinker, or we could actually set them up as a tinker role. Whatever. Uh, actually, let's let's set them up as a tinker role. But they they probably have roughly the same morale. Uh, we want them to be a general engineer down there. Um, because that's what we've we've taken them. Well, their primary is strength. And their secondary is to tinker to be able to do um, operate roles. And this episode, we're actually going to set them up with something to operate. So what I want to do is we've researched the metal refinery. So in our researches, we now have access to the metal refinery and the metal tile. So the metal refinery produces refinery mi minerals from raw ore and outputs significantly heated liquid. Okay, so again, we want to look at our temperature deletion method and we want to delete that heat as we go. So I want to look at the metal refinery and I actually want to choose something that has a little bit of overheat temperature. Um, slow heating, we'll take that one. And I sort of plan to put it about here. Um, we need to have a little bit of room around it to run piping. Uh, at the same time, we also need power. So let's sort of try and tick things off one at a time. Uh, our power choices are still fairly slim. We've got hydrogen generator, but we don't really have any other sources of hydrogen. Um, and our coal generators. So because our choices are pretty slim, we're going to dump down two coal generators. Uh, in creative mode. Uh, power. Coal generator, again, out of gold amalgam for that overheat temperature. 
Um, we're going to throw down another smart battery. Right there, please. Uh, and the other thing we're going to start using is... We don't actually have access to it. Um, why don't we have access to it? Conductive wire. So, our current power wire runs up to one kilowatt. Okay, the conductive wire, which is the one we're about to research, um, actually gives us a power capacity of two kilowatts. So that one's going to be actually fairly important. Uh, we want to put down automation wire between there and there. Oh, there goes an autosave. Uh, we want... You to only charge, I think it's 90%, actually just, just copy settings, paste in there. So at 60% they stop charging and at 20% they're fully charged. Uh, at 60% they turn them off and at 20% they turn them on. Um, we can obviously then, again, same story, just copy settings from there to there. Uh, actually, disable them. Enter to Sega. Because uh, it's fairly pointless until we actually have the power wire hooks. Ooh. Research. Yeah, we actually need the power wires hooked up before we go any further. Okay. In the meantime, we can sort of plan this one out. So we want to put in a metal refinery. Um... Probably at about this height. Because I do need, as I said, I, we will need some room above it to sort of work out where our piping is going to go. Because um, not only does this produce a lot of heat at uh, 16,000 uh, duplicate thermal units, um, it also outputs hot water. Um, it takes in cool water, uses it as coolant, and then outputs even hotter water. So we need to sort of keep that in mind as well. So we're gonna just put in, again, more insulated tiles in creative mode, so I don't have to wait for the dupes. Move. Move, or you're gonna get built in. Move. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna go on to our refinery. We're gonna drop that. Let's drop it right there. We're going to look at our plumbing. So we have a plumbing... Actually, can we deconstruct? Uh, I haven't ever looked. Can I rotate that? No. Okay. So this will turn copper to... Copper ore to copper. Gold to gold. Iron to steel which requires iron, refined carbon, and lime. So it's like a three-step process. And iron ore to iron. So potentially, and 99, enter. You will go through a lot. Uh, actually, 99 is probably a little bit. Uh, it's 100 kilos per hit, so maybe 10. 10 seems like a bit more reasonable number. So plumbing-wise, we have an input and output, okay? Um, first things first, we want to be able to bring in cooler water from our plumbing system. So we're going to take our... We're going to bridge this up correctly so the water flows. Okay, so we're going to use a liquid valve. Uh, note your four tool. Plumbing. Liquid valve. Won't go there, we'll go there. Okay, so we're going to put in a liquid valve. This gives us a direction of water flow. Okay. Uh, we're going to use insulated pipe because it's going to be fairly warm water 
and run it into our system, okay? So we're gonna always be bringing in cool water, so to speak. Uh, yeah, cool water from our uh, plumbing system. Now, we could, and it, it, it's perfectly legitimate, to just run our hot water straight out, okay? Uh, Plumbing, insulated. We could just do that, okay? And as you can see, this is gonna slowly fill up with polluted water and it will heat up the polluted water each time it actually runs. And it has quite a large storage in it. It's like 600 kilograms worth of storage. Um, the biggest issue you're gonna find is it uses water so fast that all your water that you did have running through your cooling loop is now bypassing it completely because it's always stuck going to the refinery. So you're going to need to add some sort of system to make sure this can loop the water around a few times before it actually overheats. And we need to look at a bit of polluted water right there. Go to our properties panel and you can see at 119 degrees it actually overheats. And, and turns into steam. Now, obviously water turning into steam inside of pipes, not really good for us. Uh, in here, energy, no nope. germs, properties. Um, there was meant to be an update that would tell us how much, how much heat would be added to data not found. Yeah, okay. So Clay still haven't added that update. All right. So what we actually wanna do is we wanna go back to our liquid system, uh, our deconstruction. Um, turn the creative mode back on. So get this all done quickly. Okay, so we have A water inlet right here, okay? And the water's got nowhere to go. We did get access to, a little while ago, a liquid reservoir, okay? Which is just a giant tank, which also I can't rotate. Ah, it's frustrating. Uh, doesn't matter what you make this out of, um, it just has to be made out of a, at some sort of metal ore. Uh, but I'm gonna give myself some room and put it over here. So what I really wanna do is I want to run the water from my output to my input with some way to detect what the water, what temperature the water is. Because obviously I don't want it turning into steam. So we need a liquid thermo sensor right there, uh, an automation. And we just need to join those two up. And we want to say, look, if it's going to be adding, say, 40 degrees. So if it is above, say, 70 degrees Celsius, we're going to take that water and we're going to spit it back out. We're going to run it over the cool pipe and back around this you know back into the water sieve to be deleted okay in the meantime i've got to get clean water into this system so what i want to do is when i come out of there i want to run through a liquid bridge but at the same time i want to give this one a preference so i want water to come out of here and have a preference to jump in front of um, what's coming from the main line. So the main line will top this up if the system's not already full. Uh, at the same time, dump it in. Yeah. Water that comes out of the refinery to go back into the reservoir. And then at the same time, um, if any water has exited the system, we have a way for new water to get into the system, okay? It's a little bit of a weird way of doing it, but the biggest thing we've got is we have a we have a reservoir here that 
potentially carries five tons of water. So it means for right at the moment, there's probably not a lot going through our cooling system. So this is something we need to keep an eye on. Um, it also means that we, you know, there is a chance that this might overheat. Um, again, we can go to our automation. Uh, we can see its overheat temperature is 75 degrees. Did I not make it out of something better? I don't have a copper. So we're going to really quickly deconstruct that. We're going to go back to our refinement. No utilities. Uh, thermoregulator. We're going to intentionally make it out of copper this time for that extra 50 degrees worth of overheat temperature. And now our overheat temperature is 175. So we do have access to a little thermo sensor right here. So we're going to drop that in place. Hook up a bit of automation wire. I'm going to say, hey, if you are below 110 degrees, you can run. And that should mean that this poor little thermoregulator should never uh, should never overheat. Um, at the same time, you can see that our pipe is just about full. So we want to deconstruct that. Um, which also means we can get rid of our fill pipe because this system is now full. And you can see it's 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 cooling down that air enough that it's not actually running all that often. Um, now, don't get me wrong. If we can say, hey, if you're below 20 degrees, let the gas pass. And we can run this system more actively. And we can keep doing that over and over and over until we get uh until we're we're at a point where this thing's running almost constantly to provide the maximum amount of cooling over here to cool our air into our base okay so you can always lower this lower and lower and lower until you get a, a happy medium where you, your thermoregulator is running just about all the time also at the same time means that your liquid pipes are going to be running you know you have to get enough coolant through this system. At the moment, we're, we're sort of siphoning everything off. It is slowly filling this thing up. It's only got 230 kilograms in there of the maximum 600 that it can take, um, plus another potentially five tons in the liquid reservoir. Um, you don't technically need a liquid reservoir. You could just make a loop. Um, The main advantage of having a liquid reservoir is if you have 30 degree water and 70 degree water, well, that's a better example, um, 50 degree water and 100 degree water, when the two of them mix, you end up with a perfect 75 degree um, polluted water because inside of reservoir temperatures and, and germs as well. Um, You're not going to tell me there's no germs in there, hey? <sighs> okay. Temperature and germs inside the polluted water mix perfectly. Whereas if we look at our... Oh, they also will mix in here. Um, so this will be the average of all the water that's gone in. But if we look at normal piping... Um, generally, the water won't average out between one section and the next. If one's really hot and one's really cold, they will stay one really hot, one really cold. Okay, we've finished our next research. So that gave us a large power transformer, a conductive wire bridge, a heavy connect conduction, bleh, heavy connective, a conductive joint plate, a conductive wire, and heavy conductive wire. Now, the simplicity of this, we'll go through stuff backwards. So. We have heavy watt wire, which we've had already. We now have conductive heavy watt wire. Um, the difference is this uses normal materials. This uses refined materials. The decor is minus 20 compared to minus 25 with a slightly smaller radius. Um, realistically, you want to keep your heavy watt wire far, far, far away from your duplicates. Um, the conductive joint plate and the normal joint plate there is really no difference between them. Um, one's conductive, one's not. Um, that's pretty much it. 
a conductive wire and normal wire. So a normal wire has a DECA of minus four, uh, minus five with a radius of one, and it only carries a thousand watts. The conductive wire has a uh, max power level of two and has no DECA bonuses or, or buffs. Um, wire bridge is minus five with a radius of one, and the conductive wire bridge is still minus five with a decor of one. But if you use gold, you get a 50% decor buff um, compared to gold amalgam with a 10% buff. It technically means everything being conductive wire with conductive wire bridges can vastly improve the look of your base. Uh, but for right now, we're just going to go pretty nuts with this wire and we need to get power up to here whilst keeping our CO2 generation down here. So we're going to straight away break things by me putting down dead straight power cables. Uh, we're going to run it up our central corridor. Uh, and then across, up, into there, into there. I'm going to use our conductive wire bridge. I'm going to make sure these are made out of gold. That'll break things. Uh, going to make sure these are made out of gold. I'm also going to enable both of these guys. So hopefully they get filled up with coal fairly quickly. And... Yep, yeah, we technically have enough materials we could actually even start processing. So, let's get a ladder in real quick. This is still a little bit of a, a mess. Um, we can always refine how all this works later. Oh, we're going up this way to deliver stuff. We're delivering a lot of gold amalgam. 300 kilos already. Uh, we have power. So we just need more coolant, which means people need to pee more. Uh, or we can... Uh, polluted water. I want 300, I think it is in Kevin, Kelvin, and I want 400 kilos worth. And I'm just gonna paint that in that one time. Okay. Uh, turn off that. Now, again, this is a prime example. I have a pump here that is just sucking up our polluted water. Um, well, actually, that... There we go. So we fulfilled our uh, requirement. And... Okay, so let's run through the system. So we have actually a lot more polluted water than I thought. So I've got four, slow down, slow down. I have 400 kilos of polluted water at 29.8 degrees and another 400 kilos at 30.8 degrees. So very, very small difference between the two. Okay. And you'll see as we run our system, uh, as our tinkerer who now has a something they can actually tinker with. Right. As we run out our... I don't know why the bar restarted. But okay. Come on, finish. I want to see one bit of cot... Uh, one piece... Woo. So we have one piece of gold right there, which has come out a nice balmy 40 degrees. At the same time, we'll see that we are... We now have water coming out at 37.1. So, no matter what, we already know we added about 10 degrees from any of our numbers. So, it also means, now I know that, I can take this all the way up to 100 degrees Celsius before it kicks the water back out of the system to be recycled. And that's going to be good to go for a while. We can just keep recycling the water around and around and around. Um, it will get averaged out inside here, providing I actually have any water storing in there. 
um, obviously with the amount, the small amount of water I've got going around, um, it's it's not going to average out terribly well. But what we can do, just to demonstrate, plumbing insulated. There, to there, to there. I can then jump over that. Deconstruct that. And just hook something up to that so the water knows which way to go. But as you see, we've already got the water looping around. It's quite happy looping around. Um, we can add more water to the system. Provided there's ever a gap in the pipe. Currently there isn't because it's outputting liquid as fast as inputting liquid. Um, actually, let's just clean up this pipes just a little bit. Uh, deconstruct. Deconstruct. Uh, mop. And put that up to there. So yeah, it, we're, we're looping water around. We have 10 kilos of water right here ready to go into the system whenever it has a break, whenever it stops physically moving water around in circles. Um, being that it's a fairly important thing to have goal of having refined metals laying around um, for use in, as I said, better power cables, uh, higher wattage power cables. Um, you can see this is well over the thousand watts that we're allowed to have so you know we need to have higher watt power cables we can also start looking at uh, a thermo aqua tuner which will take in water and output water again it was a higher wattage item so we need better power to be able to manage that um, but yeah we, we, we now have a tiny little water loop going that is pretty happy pretty self-sustained We'll auto fill with new water, and in theory, when anything gets too hot, and we'll just set this to set this to say 42 degrees. Um, actually, let's just set it to 50 degrees because the next bit of water coming out is at 43. Okay, let's go back to 42. Because the water's down over that limit, it's going to get shunted through here, shoved out of the system, right, and run into our liquid sieve, which will then bring the water back out at a nice balmy, plain and simple 40 degrees. So we've taken 43 degree temperature water, or potentially, uh, let's go with just 100, 100 degree temperature water, and spat it back out and just deleted that heat okay it's a plain it, it, it's a very very simple system um once you understand how it works once you get up and running um but it's a great way to just delete water from the system at the same time as that this is looping right we are adding more water whenever there's a break in the pipe and enough room to add water you could always add yourself a little loop up here so you have a little bit of more storage um, for when there is a break in the machine um, and we just keep adding water forever. Unfortunately, because we're using germy water, we will get a lot of surface germs on this machine. Um, they are food poisoning, so technically they don't matter. Um, we actually have a lot of germs at the moment, so I need to... Need to do this a few times. Uh, and I think it... Oh no, a shine nymph just, just was born. Um, so yeah, with, with, with this plain and simple system, we can delete heat, make better materials, um, and at the same time, loop around our existing, our existing water that may be okay for us, maybe a little bit warm, uh, and we're also over here, again, still deleting temperature, um, we could even take that up, yeah, down even lower. We could bring that down to 15 degrees and see how that affects the system. It's a little bit of trial and error when it comes to 
any of these sort of heat removing items. A um, little bit of set it up, come back, check it again, check it again, check it again, until you get a system that you're really, really happy with. Anyway, I'm going to leave this episode here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Next episode, we'll look at the printer um, and what it's got to offer. At the same time, now that we have some way to delete heat, plus we have some heavy watt cable, we can actually look at a oil trying to get oil up and running because that's going to be our next big charge anyway as i'm going to leave it there thank you guys for watching do hope you've enjoyed i'll see you in the next one all right bye